Hello. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're here. Hi, everybody. My name is Steve Smethers. I'm the Associate Director of the A.Q. Miller School of Journalism and Mass Communications here at Kansas State University. And welcome aboard to all of our new students. We have faculty and staff here this evening. Uh, first of all, we want to give a great round of applause to the K-State faculty brass quintet. And I want to introduce our brass quintet members, Paul Hunt, James Johnson, Jacqueline fassler kerstetter Stephen Maxwell, and Craig Parker. Let's give them a round of applause. So welcome aboard, and I would like for you to meet two very important people here at Kansas State University, in addition, of course, to yourselves. I want you to meet Dr. Kirk Schultz, the 13th president of Kansas State University, and Dr. April C. Mason, the provost and senior vice president. Good afternoon and welcome to K-State. Now when I say that in the future, and I'm going to go through this, uh, give you a little bit of practice time, I want you to say, Go Cats. Okay, so we're going to try again. So welcome to K-State. Go Cats. That's, that's not bad. As uh, first year students, that's kind of like a B or C, so let's try again. Welcome to K-State. Go Cats. Much better, much better. Uh, good evening. I'm thrilled to have you all here, and thanks for coming out to both the convocation, and then we're going to go over to the pep rally, uh, meet our athletic teams, and we're going to continue to get ready for class tomorrow. April Mason, our provost, that means that actually she runs the university. She does all the important stuff while I'm off uh, visiting with alumni and friends. Uh, our, both of us are glad to have you here. Seems like just yesterday we were passing out right here diplomas uh, to our most recent graduate. Commencement's a great time, it's what we're all working toward, and it's something that we want to see all of you in a few years walk across the stage with that K-State diploma. I'm biased, but in my view, every one of you are now valued members of a nationally recognized university that includes a top-notch faculty whose scholarship and teaching are second to none, a staff who are skilled and dedicated, and lots and lots of current fellow K-State students, some of whom you'll hear from shortly, who are just doing so well academically in terms of service, leadership on campus, around the nation and the world. So right now, so you remember all this, I want everybody to take out your phone. I know you got it with you, and if these get really boring, you got something to read. Um, take it out, I want you to get a selfie with the person sitting next to you, and tweet that back out. And uh, K-State, underline Prez, let's go ahead and get those out. Let's get some good selfies here. Everybody get one? Okay. April needed a little help because when she was going to do her selfie, it was still pointed out in this direction. So uh, what can we say? <laughs> Just a few weeks, Kansas State University is going to kick off a $1 billion innovation and inspiration campaign, which means that we have alumni, friends, corporations providing money for scholarships and other kinds of things to help your K-State experience to be the best it can be. You have many, many things to be proud of. And in the future, we just become even stronger and we couldn't be more proud of you. Don't you agree? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I want to add my welcome uh, to the presidents, to each and every one of you. We've been preparing for some time for your arrival on campus and so many people have been involved. And I have the great pleasure of being able to introduce those individuals that are sitting on the stage today to help welcome you. And they're representatives of our student body, our Salina campus, our Olathe campus, our Manhattan campus, and our global campus. They represent the academic disciplines of our university. We prioritize this evening to be together to welcome you to the academic side of what we do here at Kansas State University. Then we go to a pep rally where we celebrate 
the athletic prowess of so many individuals, and I see some rowing shirts right down here in the front. It's exciting to have you, and we know that you merge both the academic side of what we do here at Kansas State and all the other aspects. So let me introduce the individuals here on our stage. I'm going to ask all the members of the President's Cabinet to stand, and I will be recognizing you individually. So would you please stand? We have Dr. Pat Bosco, and you've all already met Dr. Pat Bosco. <laughs> Dr. Bosco serves as our Vice President for Student Life and Dean of Students. Mr. John Curry, the Director of Intercollegiate Athletics. Jackie Hartman, Chief of Staff and Director of Community Relations. Amy Button Renz, many of you know Amy as well, I bet. She serves as the President and CEO of the Kansas State Alumni Association. We're really excited to have all these individuals with us today. Jeff. Jeff, thank you. I skipped Jeff Morris, let me back up. Jeff Morris uh, serves as our Vice President for Communications and Marketing. And many of the things that you've seen this weekend, getting ready to have you here, um, all of the uh, marketing, the information, and uh, things on the web were put together by Jeff and his staff. Would you join me in thanking these individuals? Now I'm going to ask the academic leaders of our Manhattan and Global Campus to stand, and I will recognize each of them. Would the Dean's Council please stand? Dr. Tammy Beckham is our brand new Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine. Tammy is newer than many of you. She just got here to our campus. So she comes to this convocation both to welcome you and to learn. Dr. John Buckwalter, Dean of our College of Human Ecology. Associate Dean Clark, Gary Clark from our College of Engineering. Tim DeNoble, Dean of our College of Architecture, Planning, and Design. Dwayne Dunn, Associate Dean of our Global Campus. That's our online education conferences area. Lori Getch, Dean of our University Libraries, a place you'll probably be spending some time in very soon. Kevin Gwinner, Interim Dean of our College of Business Administration. Michael Herman, Associate Dean of our Graduate School. Debbie Mercer, Dean of the College of Education. Shannon Washburn, Assistant Dean, College of Agriculture. Allison Wheatley, Assistant Dean, College of Arts and Sciences. Would you help me in welcoming all of these individuals? You may be seated. Dean Verna Fitzsimmons from our Salina campus is actually doing this convocation on her own campus 60 miles away. She's the Dean and CEO of our College of Technology and Aviation, and she's presiding over the new student convocation at our Salina campus as we speak. Finally, I'd like to recognize the 2015-2016 student government president, Andy Hertig. Would you stand, Andy? and Vice President Joe Tinker, please stand. As the Chief Academic Officer of the University, as the Provost, I get to work closely with our Student Government Association leaders, and it is indeed my pleasure to do so. As President Schultz noted, Kansas State University is rapidly developing and advancing. You actually get to see that in action uh, as you've been traversing our campus going around construction sites. Ask the President what that means. He'll tell you progress. But today's exciting growth builds on decades of prior development. And what I'd like to do now is have you turn your attention to our uh, board because we have a film about our university's rich and distinctive 153-year-old history.
Take a walk through the K-State campus today and you'll see a diversity of students free to make their own choices, pursuing their individual goals and dreams. But how did we get here? History isn't just buildings, dates, and documents. It's blood, sweat, beliefs, determination. It is people. In 1855, nearly 80 men, women, and children boarded the steamship Hartford under the sponsorship of the Cincinnati and Kansas Land Company, bound for the Kansas Territory. They brought at least 10 prefabricated houses, material for business buildings, and provisions. Like those before them, these were educated men and women, judges, educators, ministers, businessmen and women, and they joined earlier settlers to establish a progressive, thriving settlement with a strong belief that education for all was key to an enlightened society. In 1858, nine of these early settlers obtained a charter from the Territory of Kansas Assembly, a charter for the Bluemont Central College Association. Backed by their beliefs, their hard-earned personal funds, and money raised back east, the cornerstone for this college was laid in May 1859. By January of 1860, a three-story limestone building was opened, with the Reverend Washington Marlette as principal and Miss Julia Bailey, the first teacher, hired. Fifty-three students were enrolled that winter. Kansas was still a territory. A territory in considerable turmoil. On January 29, 1861, Kansas entered the Union as a free state. One month later, the Bluemont College Association offered to donate its building, library, and land to the new state of Kansas in exchange for its designation as the state university. Though this offer was rejected by the governor, a Lawrence native, the wheels had been put in motion for Bluemont Central College to one day become a state educational institution. In 1862, Justin Smith Morrill, a Vermont congressman, introduced the Land-Grant College Act, a grand idea to promote education in each state of the Union. The Morrill Act was passed that same year and signed by President Abraham Lincoln. When the provisions of this new act were accepted by the state of Kansas in 1863, the Bluemont Central College Association acted quickly and again offered the college building, library, and land to the state. On February 16, 1863, Kansas State Agricultural College became a reality, the nation's first land-grant college. It opened in September 1863 with 52 students, 26 men and 26 women. In a nation ripped apart by the issue of slavery, in the midst of a devastating civil war, these early founders' determination, beliefs, blood and courage established the principles of educational opportunities for all people. As we walk across the campus today, we see smartphones and laptops, things that didn't exist in 1863. But the most important thing, the principle of freedom and the opportunity of education for all has been here from the beginning. Folks, at this time, we'd like to welcome Dr. Gregory Eisline, professor of English here at K-State. He is the Kaufman University Distinguished Teaching Scholar, the 2013 Case Kansas Professor of the Year, and the director of the K-State First Program. That's the university's first year experience program. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Greg Eisline. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here today to welcome you to Kansas State University. We are so glad you're here and a part of our Wildcat family. I'm really excited about the new school year that begins tomorrow. To be honest, I'm a little nervous. Am I prepared enough? You know, will I find my, am I going to be in the right classroom? Will my classes like what I'm going to teach this year? I always get a little nervous this time of year, but I'm mostly just excited. 
I love this time of year because it's a time to start over. It's a clean slate, and what matters is not what happened last year or in the past. What matters now is today, and tomorrow, and the rest of the school year. For you, in particular, our new students, this is true. Those of you who are just starting your college career, this is especially true. When you wake up tomorrow morning for your first day of college, you're going to have this amazing chance to start over, to make yourself into whatever it is or whoever it is that you want to become. You'll find that whatever you were in high school or before matters less now than what you do tomorrow and the next day and the rest of the school year. I can think of few other times in your life. Where you have such an amazing opportunity, like the start of college, you have this great chance to remake yourselves into the person that you want to be. I say this because chances are, when you return here about four years from now to receive your diplomas from、uh, President Schultz, you'll be a different person. Yes, you may have the same color eyes, you may have that same way of smiling. But you're going to see the world differently. You're going to think differently. You're going to be different. For almost everyone who walks through these doors and earns that degree, college is an absolutely transformative experience. So I think it's worth taking a few minutes here on the eve of your college career to think about that kind of person that you really want to become. I've been thinking a lot lately about this year's common read, *The Other West Moor*. The book is about the different kinds of opportunities we're given in life, especially when we're in our teens and our twenties, and the decisions that we make along the way that shape us into the person that we eventually become. One of the book's messages is about the importance. Of embracing the opportunities we have to challenge and transform and improve ourselves. Sometimes those opportunities can be really scary. To be honest, they can seem intimidating, uncomfortable, difficult at first. They can make you nervous. But seizing them and making the most of them is going to make all the difference in your lives. The book is also about the others in our lives. It's about those who struggle and fall, even though they have really similar backgrounds to our own. They might have seemed exactly like us, but for some reason, you got here and they didn't. It's about our mentors, our families, our friends, our teachers, those who went out of their way to make sure we can have these kind of opportunities to remake ourselves. As you start your college career, your journey to that person that you're going to become. I would encourage you to also take a moment to think about those other people in your life, those who helped you get here, but also the new folks, the new folks who are going to help you get to get you back here four years from now for a graduation ceremony. You may have already started to meet some of these people, but I want to really encourage you to reach out in these first few weeks, to embrace them, to meet them, to become friends with them. I want you to make friends with the students in your residence halls, in your fraternities, sororities, and in your classes. Join the study groups that are going to form in your classes. Drop by your professor's office hours. We're lonely when you don't come. <laughs> Take part in what's happening on campus. Go to a Landon lecture. Join a student group or an intramural team. Read the other West more and go to the events on campus. Check out a performance on McCain, or at the Purple Mask Theater. Become part of something that's bigger than yourself. Join a service team or volunteer your time. And finally, I want to encourage you to help each other. Believe it or not, you're going to be the biggest resource for each other while you're here. I love our university student philanthropy. It's called K State Proud, and their motto is "Students Helping Students." This is what makes K State distinctive. This is what makes us such an awesome place to study and to learn and to go to college. 
And helping each other, it turns out, plays an indispensable role for the helper and for the helped in our efforts to become that person we most want to be. Thank you, and have a great first day of college. We'd like to welcome three current students here at Kansas State University. Will you please welcome Sydney Ho, a member of Mortarboard Senior Honorary Society, Zev Allen, a member of Chimes Junior Honorary Society, and Abigail Friesen, a member of Silver Key Sophomore Honor Society. Hey everyone, I'm Abby, and I'm a sophomore studying agricultural economics, and I'm from a very small town called Mingo near Colby, Kansas. See, last year I had a lot of expectations of what it was going to be like when I came to college. The classes I would take, the grades I would get, the games I would go to, and the people I would meet. They were all supposed to be perfect. But I was so caught up in the expectations that I wasn't living in the present. See, college isn't defined by what you came here expecting it to be. Your experience will be built by the opportunities that you take and the challenging classes that you barely make it through. No one's will ever be the same. This will be your time to discover not just where your passions lie, but how those passions lead you to discover a problem that needs solved to better our lives and the lives of all the future generations. During your time here, you will find others who are passionate about solving that same problem, and together, in the research labs, in your clubs, and even in your free time, you and them will be the catalyst to finding the solution. There will be a time in the next few years where you're going to wonder, was going to college really worth it? But 20 years from now, you will look at the self-sustaining building that you built, the cure for cancer that you found, the charity that you founded to curb poverty, or even just the logo that you created to draw more business to your employer. And you will trace that success, that difference that you made, back to the hard work you put in. And it will all start tomorrow. So spend your time here trying something that scares you every day. By exploring your options, you just might discover the passion to solve one of the world's problems. Welcome to K-State. Hi, my name is Zev Allen. I'm a junior here at Kansas State, majoring in life science with an emphasis in pre-med. I come from the small town of Soldier, Kansas, population of 163. Again, I would like to welcome you to Kansas State University. It is truly one of the best places on earth. Today, I would like to express the importance of getting involved and seizing the opportunities presented to you. Upon entering college life, I was given some advice by a dear friend and K-State graduate, Hope Faflick. She said to me, whatever it is that you choose to be involved with, make that your premier experience. Those words have such a profound impact on how one can approach their K-State experience. Every student has different backgrounds, skills, passions, and strengths. It is how you choose to apply those tools and to what organizations that will truly define your success here at Kansas State. Don't be afraid to explore campus and find groups that interest you. With 475 clubs and organizations, finding your niche can feel overwhelming. The ability to discern which opportunities to allocate your strengths, passions, and time to is a skill that you will be constantly developing. It is truly pivotal time where you can find out who you are, identify your priorities, and leave your legacy. K-State is an opportunity. When left unengaged, it will pass you by in four quick years. When seized and utilized, it has the astonishing potential to unlock friendships, memories, and additional opportunities. K-State is a joyous, lifelong relationship that will always serve as your home as long as you choose to invest your time and your efforts here. 
Take the time to see what K-State has to offer. Learn about yourself, and this will prove to be your premier experience. Hello, my name is Sydney Ho, and I am from Topeka, Kansas. I am a senior in math and secondary education here at Kansas State. First and foremost, welcome. I am so glad that you have made the decision to further your education and to do so here at Kansas State University. Three years ago, I was in your place. I was nervous, I was homesick, and I did not really know who I was. K-State has given me the opportunity to find an identity through countless meaningful experiences I have decided to embark on. Your next four years will be a series of decisions. You will decide to go to class, you will decide to study, and you will decide to take care of yourself. You can decide to sit with a stranger in the derb, or join a club, or engage in intellectual discussion. You will become a reflection of the decisions you make as you prepare yourself for the future. Decide to involve yourself in things you truly care about. Instead of working on building up your resume, choose to do things that build you up as a well-rounded individual. An impressive resume will always follow. Your experience at K-State will be an investment in yourself. The time, effort, and money you invest into your degree from Kansas State will lead to a world of opportunities after graduation. You all are our future's most valuable asset. Take this opportunity now to have an experience that will help you contribute in a positive way to our society. Lean in on each other, advocate for yourself, and ask for help when you need it. Take full advantage of your time here at K-State, because before you know it, you'll be right back here. You have 1,364 days until you graduate. Live each one of those to the fullest. Once again, welcome to K-State, and go, go Cats! Cats! At this time, please direct your attention to the projection screens for a message from Corey Fortin, a member of the class of 2006. He is the 2015 Alumni Association Distinguished Young Alumni Award recipient. Hello, my name is Corey Fortin, and I'm recording this message from the United States Embassy in Kabul, Afghanistan. I'm excited for you today because you're at the start of a journey. Since graduating from K-State, my journey has taken me to Africa's savannas, Asia's bustling markets, and Afghanistan's rugged mountains. I'm originally from Oberlin, Kansas, and I graduated in 2006 with degrees in agribusiness and animal science. Now I'm an agriculture officer for the United States Agency for International Development. USAID is the lead government agency that works to end extreme global poverty and enable resilient democratic societies to realize their potential. In Afghanistan, I manage a $125 million agriculture development program that helps farmers increase crop yields and make more money for their families so they can afford to educate their children and build a better future. So as you all begin your journey at K-State, I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions. The first one is, where do I get my data? Does it come from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, cable news, reality TV? We all have easy access to what I call secondhand data, someone else's prepackaged and often incomplete or one-sided ideas. I encourage you to collect your own primary data instead. One of the best ways to do this is to investigate, explore, and travel. You don't necessarily have to go to Kabul or Kampala or Kathmandu, but you do have to find ways to step out of your daily routine and Kansas State will offer you plenty of opportunities to do that. Get involved in clubs and organizations that are totally different from your major. Select courses that challenge your current way of thinking. Spend a semester studying on the other side of the world. I promise you if you do, you will be humbled and you will begin to reformulate your thoughts, ideas, and opinions. Another question I want you to ask yourself, do I embrace diversity? When I was a student, I participated in the College of Agriculture's programs on diversity. This experience helped me land my job at USAID. 
One of the questions during the interview was about diversity, and because Kansas State really challenged me to think about it, I had answers and experiences ready to go during the interview. When you begin to understand someone who may wear a hijab instead of a baseball cap, who may live in a hut instead of a high-rise condo, who may be Hindu instead of Christian, who may think, act, or look differently than yourself, the decisions you make about your life will be completely different than if you're constantly taking in the same homogenous information of your daily routine. Embracing diversity creates the opportunity for empathy. That is why diversity should be sought out, celebrated, and encouraged to flourish whenever possible. Take charge of your K-State journey, because it in itself is the reward. Along your path to that diploma, remember, to explore the world for yourself and collect those valuable first-hand experiences. And embrace diversity. Make an effort to understand those who are different from you. It might just help you land that dream job after graduation. Good luck. Now will you please join me in welcoming Matt King a member of the class of 2007. He is a 2015 Alumni Association Distinguished Young Alumni Award recipient. Matt King. Hi everyone, my name is indeed Matt King and I wanted to start off by just saying one thing and that is college, whoa, yeah. Come on, that was lame. You guys are 18. You have just ventured outside of your parents' homes. You have your whole K-State career in front of you, and that's all you got, so we're going to try this one more time. College! Woo! Yeah! There you go! All right, that's what I like to hear. You've got friends here, folks, and if you don't, or if you do, you're going to make a whole lot of new ones uh, very, very soon. The football season is starting. You all are primed to experience everything that K-State has to offer. So I want to build on a theme that Corey just touched on, and that is experiences. Now, I've experienced quite a lot in my life so far. I work at the World Bank in Washington, D.C., where I manage $300 million in renewable energy funds that support projects in poor countries all over the world. I've traveled to 30 countries, I've snowboarded on three continents, and even though it does not look like it right now, I did run a marathon in Paris. In case you were wondering, Oprah ran that marathon far faster than I did. <laughs> True story. I did run it, though. I've started businesses where I've made a little bit of money, and I've started companies where I've lost it all. I've loved deeply, and I've had my heart broken, and all of these experiences make me who I am today. And I learned how to have those experiences right here at K-State, starting when I was right there in your shoes. And I'm not talking about whether to have those experiences, but I'm talking about how to have those experiences. What I'm talking about is striking a balance. It's not smart to just live it up and party and skip classes now that you're out of your parents' houses. Believe me, I did that at times. But it's also not smart to do nothing but study while living at the library, and there were times where I did that too. I think overall that I had a good balance while I was here at K-State, and I experienced a little bit of everything. And one of my K-State claims to fame actually took place just outside of this building in the athletic fields next to the rec center. It was in a slow-pitch softball game where the pitcher was former K-State and Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback Josh Riemann. And I am proud to say that I went three for four against him in that game. I had a double, a home run, and a grand slam. I had nine RBIs. But I also, this is a true story, I also struck out in slow pitch softball. Swinging in slow pitch softball. I want that to sink in real quick. It's a true story. I joined a fraternity, and at times I was involved in too many clubs and organizations. I stayed out all night more times than I can count. Sometimes that meant being at the bars in Aggieville after I was 21, or hanging out with friends, or working on stuff for some of the student groups that I was involved in. But it also meant staying up all night studying at the library or elsewhere, and I am not talking about cramming the night before a test. Do not do that. 
I'm talking about being fully engaged in my education, losing myself in the books I was reading for Middle Eastern politics or analyzing the economic benefits of wind power in Kansas. I'm talking about fully experiencing the learning that we have the opportunity to do here at K-State. So don't ever lose sight of the fact that getting your degree is the ultimate reason that you are here right now. So throughout my balanced time at K-State, I never forgot that I was here for my education. I got one B plus while I was here in architecture, I think 120. And I ended up getting my master's degree from Oxford in England. I won a Fulbright scholarship to do it, which means I didn't pay a penny for that master's degree. And it was those experiences that I had here at K-State that led me to those experiences at Oxford, that has led me to those 30 countries to snowboard on three continents, and yes, to run a marathon slower than Oprah. So I'm not telling you what to do because you're all young adults now and you'll figure this thing called life out one way or the other, but I'll never forget what one of my university distinguished professors told me once. He said, do not let your schooling get in the way of your education. And I think that striking this balance of experiences, both inside and outside the classroom, yes, with a focus on just killing it inside the classroom and getting your degree, is the key to having a healthy, full, and fun, okay, we practice this, experience here at college! Woo! Yeah! Congratulations, guys. Welcome to K-State. And finally, to deliver a charge to Kansas State University's newest students, please welcome Dr. Zila Wiley, Assistant Dean of the College of Agriculture. Dr. Wiley. Good evening. Hi. Great, great. So I have this great opportunity to present a, the charge to you. And I know I'm between you and the pep rally. So I am going to be short, sweet, but yet so sincere. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm happy to be part of the history of you because the convocation starts everything, whether you were valedictorian, salutatorian, or just happy to graduate. We are happy that you are here. See, we recruited you, we want you. Now we have to retain you, keep you here, aim for you to graduate, for your experience to be awesome. So to give you a charge, because I know this is what you've been waiting for, is that I charge you to be you, that authentic you, for you to graduate, for you to embrace what Kansas State University has to offer, you have to be you. You have to trust and you have to believe, no matter the college where you are, no matter what the next steps are, you have to trust and believe in you. You see myself, as well as the platform party behind me, we're your resources. You have to use us because we recruited you to retain you and for you to graduate. See, we want you to be back in this building. And we want you, your family, your relatives, your guardians, everybody to be so happy for you to walk across the stage, for this to be your time and embrace it because it's all about you. However, when it's all about you, we have others that are part of that journey. Meaning that the platform behind me, whether it's educational student support services, athletics, because we know we all are gonna be excited to go to any type of game that is part of that. And then housing and dining. You have so many aspects and resources here at Kansas State University that is all about you. But first, you have to trust and believe that you can do it. Because we trust and believe that you can do it. We wouldn't have recruited you here. We wouldn't have just been there knocking, because you know how Dr. Bosco team is, they're very persistent. And that's how we got you here. So 
I want to point out a few more things that, like I said, with your parents. It takes a village for you to get here. And like my parents, they were so instrumental for me to go to my alma mater. Because when you graduate from Kansas State, no matter if you go to graduate school, or if you go to medical school, or if you just go straight into corporate America, that first university is the one that you embrace. It's the one that you just, when you talk about it, you feel it. Because I am a graduate of Prairie View A&M University in Prairie View, Texas. Now you see how I said that? You know, I was ready, wasn't I? And they're purple too. Now I'm not advertising for other universities because you're at the right place. But I want you to know after some 30 years, I still feel my school, I still know my alma mater. And that's what we are expecting of you. So before I close, because I told you I wouldn't keep you long, I said I want you to realize like this is such a great weekend for me because it's, it's where it all starts. This is the new year for you. This is your new journey. You're all starting right at the same point. It's somewhat bittersweet because this is the weekend I lost my father. My father's very instrumental. My, both of my parents are. I'm a daddy's girl, even though he's passed away. And my father right now would just be so proud if he knew that I was here with my degree, with my regalia on, and I'm talking to the, uh, the, for the convocation for this class, your, your new, the new students. And see, that's what you have to embrace when you know who you are. I know that I represent my parents, I represent my alma mater, but now I represent the College of Ag, Agriculture is K-State Research and Extension. So I am purely K-State, and that's who you will be. So before I close again, so close your eyes, and you got to be part, because the next time the president gets up and he says, go cats, I know you're going to really feel it. So the time has come. It's, it, you know, you're back in, in this facility, you're about to graduate, and you actually feel it. You've gone through your years. We won all the Big 12 championships. I mean, you are the generation. You're also the generation that will feed 9 billion people by 2050. You're the generation that will make the mark at Kansas State University to meet our 2025 goals or to be that top 50 research institution. You're it. So some of you are closing your eyes and with me, and some of you aren't. So, but my, so again, my charge is for you to be you. So now open your eyes. It's time. Do you feel it? You're about to graduate. It is the best time that could, I mean, this is your first degree after high school. You're either in the College of Agriculture, you're the College of Arts and Sciences, you're in engineering, business, either K-State Salina, K-State Olathe, you're with us. Now you have all your friends. Aren't you excited? See the person next to you or beside you, they might be the next CEO, but they are your friend, your lifetime friend. The person that you cried with, the person that you studied with, the person that you did the all-nighter to make sure you got that A on that chemistry or biology exam, this is it, young people. It's time for you to graduate. It's the best time. You are the generation. You are the K-State family. Again, we recruited, we recruited you for you to graduate. This is an awesome opportunity. I'm so pleased that you allowed me to present a charge to you because the charge is for you to be you. Trust and believe because we trust and believe in you. Remember, it's all about you. So thank you for your attention, and go Cats! So folks, you just graduated. How do you feel about that? <laughs> we just saved your folks a bunch of money. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Wiley. Ladies and gentlemen, we would ask at this time, since you've graduated, you're going to have to learn the alma mater, right? 
And so we want you to please stand and join the members of the K-State Choir in singing the Kansas State University alma mater. And so, fellow Wildcats, this concludes the 2015 New Student Convocation. We look forward to seeing you again here in Bramlage Coliseum on many occasions, including your own commencement ceremony in four years. Presently, you're invited to join us next door in Bill Snyder Family Stadium for this year's kickoff pep rally. You ready for football? Best wishes, and again, welcome to K-State. Folks, we'd uh, like to ask you to help us keep Bramlage Coliseum and K-State as a whole clean and ecologically sustainable. Please deposit your trash and any recyclables in appropriate designated containers as you exit. Thank you very much.